There's no question that the 2021 NFL Draft had a pretty good quarterback class. So you end up with five quarterbacks taken in the top 15 picks. It's a reflection of that. That said, I was still surprised that Cincinnati quarterback Desmond Ritter did not declare for this year's draft. I was really surprised. She already talked about he was a redshirt junior. Like, is going back to school really going to be the best decision for him? Is it going to give him a chance to work on flaws and improve in key areas? Or does it potentially put him in a situation where it gets another year of film on him, another year for him to get exposed, another year potentially for teams to overthink it? Like, there's a risk-reward type of thing to declaring. There's a risk-reward certainly to going back. And only time will tell as to whether or not Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati ultimately made the right decision. I mean, he had a pretty solid 2020 season, especially Cincinnati and their run um, all the way through, going through the regular season undefeated and barely losing in the bowl game. He completed over 66% of his passes, had 19 touchdown passes to six interceptions. He's a dual threat guy, you know, almost 600 yards rushing and another 12 touchdowns. So when you talk about explosive playmakers at the quarterback position, you know, this is a guy that you're certainly looking at and saying, hey, He's one of those premier prospects in this draft in terms of that dual threat ability. He's one of those guys you're probably taking a look at for the Heisman race in 2021. Um, but like I said, I was surprised that he decided he was going to go back to school for another year because I was wondering, like, how much better are you going to really get at this point? And I think when I look at Desmond Ritter and I watch what he did in 2020, I think in some ways it is a reflection of the fact that, you know, his flaws are his flaws but he maybe has fewer flaws than other guys. It's just his flaws are maybe a little bit more pronounced because he has more seasoning. He's had 30 plus career starts. You know, he's had three years basically as a starting quarterback. So looking at it, I wonder how much room for growth and improvement there really is here, but there could be, there still could be. Uh, but when I look at him, like one thing that's unique to me about Ritter compared to a lot of the other notable quarterbacks in this class, especially some of the dual threat guys, the Sam Howells of the world's, um, the Malik Willis's of the worlds, the Spencer Rattlers of the worlds, and so forth, is that Desmond Ritter's got size. A lot of these other guys in this draft class you're talking about are six foot two if they're lucky, six foot one, probably in some cases even six foot. And I'm wondering if that's a trend that we're going to see play out more at the quarterback position in the years to come. The guys are going to get a little bit smaller, but they're going to get even more athletic as the running game at the quarterback position becomes increasing in terms of its importance. But Desmond Ritter, you're talking about probably 6'3 and a half, maybe 6'4, 215 pounds. He looks more like the prototype size of an NFL quarterback, which is going to make him stand out a little bit in this class. He's an elite runner with speed, vision, and physicality. No, I don't think he's quite the dynamic runner of, let's say, Malik Willis from Liberty. Uh, but Desmond Ritter... He's got those long strides, like he's got vision, he's got some physicality that it runs with, and he does have speed, and it will surprise you. Like, he is a difference maker as a runner, as reflected by the almost 600 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns in a shortened season during the COVID-impacted 2020 campaign. What I really love about him, and I think this is where the experience comes into play, but in some ways, this is just a natural thing sometimes. He has a high level of pocket presence and confidence and poise as a pocket passer, he's got a great feel for staying in the pocket, moving within the pocket, buying himself additional time. And where you worry about these dual threat guys a lot of time and their propensity for bailing out too early or fucking up their offensive lines, protection and prop pocket because they're moving too damn quickly. They get kind of Jimmy leg and scatterbrain. Desmond Ritter doesn't do that. Like you'll watch repeatedly in 2020, the pocket collapses around him and he waits until that perfect moment in time and then he breaks through and he takes off running. Or he's able to hang tough and make the big throw. He's able to sit there and have the pocket collapse and buy just a little bit more time. Like, it was a lot of fun to watch him in that sense. Like, it was special. And compared to some of the other guys in this class, it certainly is elite-level talent for him. It's one of his biggest strengths that I see that can translate very well to the NFL level. He's got top-level arm strength. He can throw it on a rope to all levels of the defense. So when you talk about some of the basic things you're going to be looking for, in the modern NFL quarterback, he can run and he can throw it on a rope to all three levels. Short, intermediate, deep. Like, you can't coach some of those things. He just has them. He also showed an ability to go through his progressions. He can get to his third read, come back to his primary. And I think that's something, again, that bodes to the experience. Over 30 starts as a college quarterback, you're talking about a guy, when you think about that poise, it buys him the extra time to be able to read the defense. 
And sometimes guys can go through a progression and go from primary to secondary and tertiary options. But then there's that piece, there are some guys that can quickly scan the field and then come back. And not everybody can do that. Even a lot of guys in the NFL can't do that. Desmond Ritter showed me in 2020 that he can. And that's certainly another impressive trait that stands out to me that makes me feel like, hey, you know, maybe it made more sense for you, Declare. Uh, but that said, he certainly has some weaknesses that he's going to have to address that will ultimately determine just how big of a prospect he's going to be in terms of the upcoming NFL draft, just in terms of what his true upside is as an NFL starting quarterback. First and foremost, that deep ball accuracy is severely lacking. It stinks. And it's due to some very basic mechanical flaws. He has a bad tendency to keep his weight back and have his left shoulder kind of fly up. And you'll watch this when he's throwing deep. You'll see that he stays back and then his shoulder kind of dips up. And what that does is that leads to that ball floating, going high, like he loses accuracy when he does that. Think about it similar to a golf swing when you try to want to shift your weight back to your back foot. If you don't shift your weight back, that's a problem. But also if you shift your weight back and then you don't use your lower body in your swing coming through the ball, that's also going to create a problem. You're going to block the ball or you're going to use too much of your arms and you're not going to get the velocity and accuracy that you should be able to with your shot. It's a similar type of thing here when you're talking about the quarterback position and talking about throwing the ball. It is something that pops up consistently like it's not a here or there. Or sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. It's pretty much unanimous consistently across the board and it is arguably to me the biggest weakness that he has that arm strength only buzz does but so good if you can't consistently connect with the receiver down the field uh, he needs to throw with better timing and anticipation um, and I think this also kind of comes into what I saw out of him a little bit like I would talk about if you remember a couple years ago with Lamar Jackson coming out of Louisville was that there were times where it seemed like Lamar Jackson was guiding and wishing and hoping the ball into just sometimes just fucking letting it fly and letting it go and living with the consequences. And I see that from Ritter some too. There seems to be times where he's hoping and wishing that it goes into a spot, which I think is just a reflection of some of the accuracy challenges he has in general. But I think some of it is just a confidence thing. And sometimes when you waver and you're not as confident as you should be, that's where you can have like this self-fulfilling prophecy that's when you can create the problems whereas a Desmond Ritter should be looking at this and see it own it do it and yeah you might fuck up you might make some mistakes but I actually think in the long term he'd be better off if he took a more aggressive more confident approach to his throwing the football um, in terms of the throwing with better timing and better anticipation you see sometimes that he double pumps and he kind of doubts a little bit of what he sees he can see it and you can see that he sees it but sometimes it's a matter of, I don't know if it's tr not trusting what he sees or it's thinking that, hey, this might not be the best option. There's something else. And he just needs to get to a space where he can make that decision and trust it and be confident in it. His ball handling is a little sloppy at times, especially with some of the RPO handoffs. There were several fumbles in 2020 that were highly avoidable, but it led to him. It was caused by him holding on to the ball too long and just some of those sloppy ball handling things that he's going to want to knock out as he prepares for the NFL level going into this 2021 college season. And the other thing too, like it does matter a little bit. He's going to be a little bit older than some of the other top quarterback prospects. He's 20, going to be 23 come draft time. So, you know, you're going to say, well, that doesn't seem like much in the grand scheme of things, but you're also talking about here, taking a guy like Ritter and comparing him to some other guys at the position that might only be 21 come draft time. They're looking at this and they're saying, okay, Ritter's here at 23. He's had a couple of more years, more skin in the game, and this is all that he is. Maybe he's a little bit more than some other guys, but where are those guys going to be in two years from now when they're 23 and he's 25? His growth curve, his growth progression might be slower. They might be ahead of him where Desmond Ritter would be at 23, and they will certainly be way ahead of him when he's 25. So you got, you got to look at that and you say, okay, you know, in the grand scheme of things, does that matter that much? Maybe, maybe not. But that could be something that concerns a team a little bit because they just might be getting a little less upside and a little less length in terms of the player that they're drafting. But I still like the kid. I understand as I watch it more, like I have my moments where I'm like, maybe he should have declared, maybe he shouldn't. I get why he came back to school because he did have some notable flaws that he needed to work on. That deep ball accuracy thing in particular would have significantly impacted him and led to him being more of a day two pick picked around the range of a Kellen Mond or a Davis Mills, where his talents indicate that he could potentially have been a first round pick picked around where Mac Jones was or being maybe QB six off the board in the 2021 draft. 
Um, I love the arm talent. I love the athleticism. I love the poise that he shows as a pocket passer and his natural feel and confidence within the pocket, his ability to go through his progressions and come back. Like That's high-level stuff. Those are some high-level traits that he has that not many of the other quarterbacks in next year's draft are going to possess. Um, I look at him, and I, I'm looking at if I'm projecting him in terms of like an NFL type of guy, you know, I've had a little bit of trouble here, admittedly, because I'm like, there are flashes where I see somebody like a freaking Lamar Jackson. There are moments where I see somebody like an Andrew Luck. There are moments where I see somebody like a Drew Locke. Like, I see all of that. If I was going to say anything, maybe it's a higher-end Drew Locke. Um, but I think, you know, when you look at what he is in the NFL, I don't think you always see Tannehill's ability as a runner as much as you could. Like he's kind of settled in. But maybe in that type of range, more so in terms of the type of level of quarterback that Desmond Ritter could be. Uh, my early draft grade on him, I look at him as kind of like a late first-round grade. And honestly, you know, the, the guy and it's a little tough because I hate to compare quarterbacks to a quarterback that was just taken the year before. But if you look at him and you think about it, I tell you what, now that I think about it, the quarterback he really reminds me the most of is Justin Fields. Like from a physicality standpoint, the running ability, the arm strength, like that's who he reminds me of as much as anybody is probably Justin Fields. In this case, though, I think when I look at Ritter, I see a little bit of a better prospect than I did with Justin Fields because I think his arm is a little bit better than Fields. I think that his pocket presence is elite where Fields' is wasn't. Um, I think he does a much better job of going through his progressions, whereas he sometimes doesn't trust what he sees. Justin Fields had significant problems reading and reacting to what he saw. Uh, that's kind of the difference there. Um, but I look at Desmond Ritter right now. If you told me, hey, where would he go in your board on the 2022 NFL draft? Probably like late first round night right now. I wanted him to be like QB1 or QB2, but at this moment, I don't think he is. What could help him get there? is working on some of that mechanical stuff, getting his deep ball accuracy better. If he could do that and speed up some of his decisions and being a little more confident as a thrower, like you could be talking about him in that QB1 mix. Or if he doesn't work on that, you're probably looking at a guy that's going to get end up getting drafted on day two that has some starter upside but never might achieve his true potential. But I'm excited to see what he does now that he came back to Cincinnati for another year. It's probably going to be a really good team. They had a really good year last year. Could be even better this year. He certainly, I would expect, to get a guy to get some Heisman hype. Um, so he's going to get the profile this year, and it's going to be interesting to see with that increased spotlight burning brightly on him how he's going to deliver.